We now move on to the last section of the course, 3.5 Chemical Analysis. And in this first video, we're going to look at chromatography. So what is chromatography? Well, it's a method used to separate and sometimes identify uh, a mixture of liquids. And in chromatography, it's the differences in polarity or and or the size of molecule that we use to dif differentiate between the different uh, substances. So just to stress, so it's differences in polarity or differences in size which derive the separation technique. And the first version we'll look at is paper chromatography. So this is a classic example of paper chromatography when we use it to separate out the different dyes in a spot of black ink. So the spot of black ink is on the paper strip, which is in the paper strip is the stationary phase. The mobile phase is a solvent, which in this case is water. Now the water will gradually soak up, hit the ink spot and then continue to travel up the paper. So what we see as the water travels up is that some of the dyes present in black ink move up very quickly with the water, some less so and some not at all. Whether or not they move quickly, slowly or not at all depends on the polarity of the dye. The, in this case the water is a very polar solvent, so the very polar dyes will dissolve in the water and move the water. So the blue here would be a very polar dye and it's moved up very quickly with the water. The purple, polar but not quite as polar as the blue dye. Yellow, slightly less polar still. And then what's left on the dot down here uh, is actually non-polar and wasn't soluble in the water at all. So. The more polar molecules would move up the paper faster with the polar solvent. A more sophisticated technique, but one that uh, schools don't really have the equipment to carry out, is gas chromatography. So this kind of represents what gas chromatography equipment looks like. This spiral here is just a metal tube packed with some the stationary phase some solid okay. the sample is injected in here along with the mobile phase which is usually a gas and you then time how long it takes for your substance to travel through the column and come out here where it is detected so the stationary phase is usually polar and the mobile phase the gas which has been pumped through in gas chromatography is usually non-polar in fact it's usually a noble gas like argon or helium because not only is it very non-polar but it's also totally unreactive and so won't uh, react with the substances you're trying to detect Okay, so let's imagine we put a mixture of methane and ethanol into the sample, into this gas chromatograph. Okay. So, so let's imagine this is our methane. Okay, now the methane is non-polar. Okay. So it's going to travel very fast with the non-polar solvent. So it will go quite fast and so come out the detector in a very short time. So what you get from a gas chromatograph is a spectra in which you get these peaks at different retention times. Now this one here had a relatively short retention time. So let's say in this case this is our methane. 
Whereas the ethanol, if this is now represents it's an ethanol molecule, because the ethanol is polar because of the OH group, it will travel very slowly because it's more attracted to the stationary phase. So it will be quite a long time before we eventually see the ethanol appearing out this end. So it would have a far longer retention time. So this would be our ethanol. Okay. Say it was a mixture of methane and ethane we were trying to separate. Now in that case they're both non-polar. And if the two substances have similar polarity, then it's the size of the molecule that depends, uh, that determines the retention time. Small molecules move faster than big molecules. So once again, if it was methane and ethane, the methane would come off first because it's a smaller molecule, so it travels faster, and the ethane would come off later on because it's slightly bigger, and so it takes a longer time to travel through the column. You'll notice here that the ethanol peak, as well as having a longer retention time than the methane, is also a larger peak. So the size of the peak uh, depends on how much of the substance is present uh, in your sample. Okay, so the size of the peak indicates the amount of the given substance. So this would suggest in our sample we'd have maybe three times the amount of ethanol than we did methane because it's got a bigger peak uh, to tell us that there's more ethanol in our sample. Okay, so what should you be able to know what should you know about chromatography? Firstly, you should recall that chromatography separates substances mainly on the basis of polarity. And you also recall that if you have two samples, two substances with the same polarity, the small molecules will travel faster than the big molecules. That goes for gas chromatography and paper chromatography. And you should be able to interpret gas chromatic chromatograph spectra, uh, be able to identify from it what samples are present, what substances are present in the sample, and what one has a greater concentration.